Good morning. Today is August the 4th, 2023, the ninth Friday after Pentecost. And uh, as usual on Fridays, my name is Mike Boyle, and I'm here to uh, lead everyone in morning prayer. Hope everything's going really well uh, wherever you happen to be. And uh, let's just, before we begin, let's just take a moment and center ourselves and put ourselves in the presence of God. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord who has redeemed the world, come let us adore him. Come let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord who has redeemed the world, come let us adore him. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Renew in me a right spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Renew in me a right spirit. Rejoice, Jerusalem, for through you all will be gathered to the Lord. 
Let all speak of his majesty and sing his praises in Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, holy city, he scourged you for the work of your hands, but will again pity the children of the righteous. Praise the Lord for his goodness and bless the king of the ages. so that his tent may re be rebuilt in you with joy. May he gladden within you all who were captives. All who were ravaged, may he cherish within you for all generations to come. A bright light will shine to all parts of the earth. Many nations shall come to you from afar, and the inhabitants of all the limits of the earth drawn to you by the name of the Lord God, bearing in their hands their gifts for the King of Heaven. Every generation shall give joyful praise in you and shall call you the Chosen One from generation to generation. Go then, rejoice over the children of the righteous. who shall all be gathered together and shall bless the Lord of the ages. Happy are those who love you, and happy those who rejoice in your prosperity. Happy are all who shall grieve over you, over all your chastisements, for they shall rejoice in you, as they behold all your joy forever. My spirit blesses the Lord, the great King. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice, Jerusalem, for through you all will be gathered to the Lord. Christ endured the cross for us, and by his death he destroyed death forever. Fight those who fight me, O Lord. Attack those who are attacking me. Take up shield and armor and rise up to help me. Draw the sword and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and humbled. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be dismayed. Let them be like chaff before the wind. And let the angel of the Lord drive them away. Let their way be dark and slippery. And let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without cause. Without a cause, they have dug a pit to take me alive. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they hid. Let them fall into the pit they dug. Then I will be joyful in the Lord. I will glory in his victory. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those who are too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Malicious witnesses rise up against me. They charge me with matters I know nothing about. They pay me evil for, in exchange for good. My soul is full of despair, but when they were sick, I dressed in sackcloth. and humbled myself by fasting. I prayed with my whole heart as one would for a friend or a brother. I behaved like one who mourns for his mother, bowed down and grieving. But when I stumbled, they were glad, they were glad and gathered together. They gathered against me. Strangers whom I did not know tore me to pieces and would not stop. They put me to the test and they mocked me. They gnashed at me with their teeth. O oh Lord, how long will you look on? 
Rescue me from the roaring beasts and my life from the young lions. I will give you praise. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you in the mighty throng. Do not let my treacherous foes rejoice over me. Nor let those who hate me without cause wink at each other. For they do not plan for peace. But invent deceitful schemes against the quiet in the land. They opened their mouths at me and said, Aha, we saw it with our own eyes. You saw it, O Lord, do not be silent. O Lord, be not far from me. Awake, arise to my cause. To my defense, my God and my Lord. Give me justice, O Lord, according to your righteousness. Do not let them triumph over me. Do not let them say in their hearts, Aha, just what we want. Do not let them say, We have swallowed him up. Let all who rejoice at my ruin be ashamed and disgraced. Let those who boast against me be clothed with dismay and shame. Let those who favor my cause sing out with joy and be glad. Let them say always, Great is the Lord who desires the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall be talking of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Christ endured the cross for us, and by death he destroyed death forever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and your flesh. For some time, when Saul was king over us, it was you who led Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It, shall, it is you who shall be the shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be the ruler of Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah for six, seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem against the Jebusites and the inhabitants of the land who said to David, You will not come here, even the blind and the lame will turn you back thinking, David cannot come here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, which is now the city of David. David had said on that day, whoever would strike down the Jebusites, let them get up the water shaft to attack the lame and the blind, those whom David hates. Therefore it is said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around the millow inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David, along with cedar trees and carpenters and masons who built David a house. David then perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be not far away from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. 
and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Be not far away from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Silas had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a, city, a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days argued with him from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead, saying, This is the Messiah, Jesus, who I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some ruffians in the, marking pla in the marketplaces, they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. When they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authority, shouting, These people have been turning the world upside down. These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. They are acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying there is another king named Jesus. The people and the city officials were disturbed when they heard this, and after they had taken bail from Jason and the others, they let them go. That very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas off to Berea, and when they had arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. These Jews were more receptive than those in Thessalonica, for they welcomed the message very eagerly and examined the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. Many therefore believed, including not a few Greek women and men of high standing. But when the Jews of Thessalonica learned that the word of God had been claimed by Paul in Berea as well, they came there too to stir up and incite the crowds. Then the believers immediately sent Paul away to the coast, but Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving instructions to have Silas and Timothy join him as soon as possible, they left him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, uh, excuse me, through the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Through the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. A reading from the beginning of the letter to Polycarp by St. Ignatius of Antioch, bishop and martyr. Ignatius, also called Theophorus, to Polycarp, who is bishop of the church of Smyrna, or rather who was for his bishop God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, greetings and all good wishes. Recognizing your devotion to God, firmly built as if it is on a solid rock, I am full of thanksgiving to him for allowing me to see your blessed countenance May I ever enjoy the sight of it in God. I beseech you by the grace with which you are, were in, you are endowed to press forward on your course and to exhort all men and women to salvation. Justify your Episcopal dignity by your unceasing concern 
for the spiritual and temporal welfare of the flock. Let unity, the greatest of all goods, be your preoccupation. Carry the burdens of all men and women as the Lord carries yours. Have patience with all in charity, as indeed you do. Give yourself in prayer continually. Ask for wisdom greater than you now have. Keep alert with an unflagging spirit. Speak to each person individually, following God's example. Bear the infirmities of all like a perfect athlete of God. The greater the toil, the richer the reward. If you love only your good disciples, you gain no merit. Rather, you must win over your more troublesome of them by kindness. The same salve does not hear all wounds. Convulsion should be allayed with poultices. Be prudent as the serpent in all things, and innocent as the dove always. You are both body and soul. Treat the manifestations of human fault, even as you pray for knowledge of things invisible. Then you will lack nothing but abound in every blessing. Do as the circumstances require, like the pilot looking the, to the wind and storm-tossed sailor to the harbor that you may win your way to God with your people. Exercise self-discipline, for you are God's athlete. The prize is immortality and eternal life, as you know full well. In everything I am your devoted friend, I and my chains which you have kissed. Do not be overwhelmed by those who seem trustworthy, yet teach heresy. Remain firm like the anvil under the hammer. The good athlete must take punishment in order to win. And above all, we must bear with everything for God, so that he may in turn may bear with us. Increase your zeal, read the signs of the times, look for him who is outside, outside time, the eternal one, the unseen, who became visible for us. He cannot be touched and yet cannot, su and cannot suffer, yet he became subject to suffering and endured so much for our sake. Do not neglect the widows. After the Lord, it is you who must be their guardian. Nothing must be done without your approval, and you must do nothing without God's approval. As indeed is the case, stand firm. Services should be held often. Seek out everyone by name. Do not look down upon slaves, whether men or women. Yet they too should not be arrogant, but should give better service for the glory of God so as to attain, as to gain from him a better freedom. They should not be anxious for their freedom to be bought at the community's expense, for they might prove, then prove to be the slaves of their own desires. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without, you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we, we may pass through things temporal, that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, 
that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but, we rem we, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whom, whose spirit the whole body of, the, of your faithful people is gov governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers that we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, you are Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let's offer any personal intentions we might have at this time. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, announced by the message of an angel to the Virgin Mary, so by his cross and passion we may be brought into the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Take care.